Guys, here we are talking about absolute value functions again. Yay! Um, so we've talked about how to do them from a table, and now we're going to learn some of these shortcuts. We've been investigating them already. Basically, we're going to learn how to look at the equations of absolute value functions and figure out the vertex and the slope and everything without having to do a table every time. Can you do a table every time? Absolutely. And I would suggest it if you're struggling to still do the table once in a while because it helps you really see what points are actually on the absolute value and just graph those points. You can never go wrong if you just plug in numbers for your input, your x, and get out an output. Okay? But... For this one, there's some shortcuts that you can look at that you don't actually have to do that. It makes it so much quicker. So remember we talked about parent functions? We talked about how the parents and the, and the children don't always look exactly alike, but the parent function basically gives us an idea of what they're going to sort of look like. So the parent function of the absolute value is f of x equals absolute value of x, right? It's just a very vanilla uh, graph. Starts at zero, zero, goes up one over one, up one over one. Okay. So let's describe how these ones look different than the parent function. You could use Desmos for this. You could use a graphing calculator, or you could graph these um, by hand and figure this out. But we talked about this yesterday. We looked at it yesterday, so let's just go through these. This one goes right five. So you take the parent function and you just shift it to the right five. Now remember we talked about um, there's H and there's K, and H is a hypocrite, but K, he knows what's up, right? So H is this one in here with, K, or with X. H is a hypocrite, so if you see a negative, he does the opposite. So if H, if you see a negative, you do the opposite, which is positive. So you see a negative 5, and you move to the positive direction, 5 which is the opposite of the negative, right? Now, k knows what's up, right? So he is here. This is a k right here. So this one shifts it up 9. We go in the positive direction. That's the positive, positive for y. This one shifts it in the positive for x, which is this way, which is the opposite of what we see. So just remember, our h is a hypocrite. You always do the opposite of what you see, and k knows what's up. So you always do exactly what you see. All right, so let's take a look at this one. Remember, if you have a negative in front of the absolute value, this just flips it over, so you have one that looks like that. So this is going to reflect across the y axis, the x-axis, excuse me. Okay. Now this one, so this is a k. This is outside of the absolute value, so this affects our y values. So this goes down, five, down to... And then this out here, this gives us a vertical stretch. Remember, a vertical stretch gives us one that looks more like this instead of one that looks like this. So this is stretched. Okay? So this one's going to give us a stretch by 3. And we could call it a vertical stretch just so that we know that's a vertical stretch. All right, let's look at this one. This one is an H. It's inside of the absolute values. So this one's a hypocrite. We see positive, which means negative. So we're going to go left, 6. And this one has a vertical compression. Because remember, if this number outside, if this A value is less than 1, meaning it's a fraction, not necessarily like negative 1, negative 2, if it's in between 0 and 1, then it makes our... our uh, absolute value, instead of being really like nice and normal like this, it really like squishes it out so that it's nice and wide like that. So that's a vertical compression by one-fourth. Right now let's take a look at this one. So here's an H on the inside, and H is a hypocrite, so this goes to the left, 7. Now this 2, negative 2 is on the outside, so that's a K, which means it affects our Y values. So this affects our X values. This affects our Y values. So this means it goes down two, right? Because K knows what's up. Now this negative out here, we know, reflects it across. Reflects across the vertex. 
It doesn't actually reflect across the x-axis, it just flips down. And you can check on Desmos and things for that. Okay, so let's give the formal definition of the vertex form. This is on the very front of the worksheets we worked on yesterday. The actual form, remember y equals mx plus b, that's just a form of a line, right? It's one way to write a line. Standard form is another way to write a line, okay? Quadratic form is for quadratic equations, we would write them in that form, okay? So this is just a different, a form to write absolute value functions and different letters in the form tell us things about the function, okay? So f of x equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. So this is the vertex form, and different letters in here tell us something about it. So h and k are the vertex, and you could verify that, because when we want to find the vertex, we set what's inside of the absolute values equal to zero, right? We say x minus h equals zero, and we solve for, a, uh, for x. Well, what letter here has to be what, what does x have to be for this to become zero? Well, x has to be h, right? This has to be h minus h to get zero. So we know that whatever number is here, if we take that and we put it in for x, we're gonna end up with zero inside the absolute values. So the x value of your vertex is h. Now think about this. If we put h in right here, we get h minus h, which is zero. Absolute value of zero is still zero. We multiply it by a, it's still zero. It doesn't matter what a is. This the whole thing is always gonna be zero at the value h, because h minus h is zero. This whole thing becomes zero, and all we have left is k. So when we plug h into this equation, our input is h, our output, our, x, or our y value becomes k because this whole thing becomes zero and all we have left is k. So that's why our vertex is h, k. Now, a lot of you have already recognized this, but if you look at this number right here, it's basically the slope of our line. But remember that an absolute value is actually a piecewise function. We have this line and this line. Now, if I look at this line and we think about our, our um, slope dude and things like that, that's a positive slope. So the slope of this line is just going to be equal to whatever a is. But the slope of this line is going to be equal to negative a. Right? Because this is a negative slope. Remember, really, an absolute value is just a piecewise function where we just keep these pieces and get rid of those pieces of the lines. OK, so a represents the slope of the right side, negative a is the slope of the left side, and then hk is our vertex. All right, so let's do a few practice problems. So give the vertex of each inequality and then graph. All right, hk, well, let's figure out where h is. h is right here. And in our original inequality, or in our original um, vertex form, we say f of x, equals a times x minus h plus k. So this is x minus h. So h in this case is 2. Because x minus h, x minus, and then we're subtracting a positive 2, if that makes sense. All right, and then k, this is plus k. Well, remember that this is really just like plus negative 4. So truly, our k is actually negative 4. So this is our vertex. We're going to graph that. We're going to go over 2, down 4. And then we can use the slope of our line to figure out where the sides of this absolute value function is going to be. So we go up 1, over 1, because the slope is a. And look right here, there's nothing here. Well, if you have something invisible that's multiplied, that's a 1. Right, so right here we see nothing, that makes it a one. So we go up one, over one, in both directions because the slope of the other line is negative, is a negative one. And then, we just connect our points. 
make our graph. There you go, there's your absolute value function. That was way easier than making a table, right? All right, let's take a look at this one. This one has a vertex of h, k again. Well, here's h and here's k. Oh wait, there's nothing there for k. Well, if there's nothing, that would mean a zero, right? Because plus zero is the same as that invisible area. Okay, so h, well, remember our vertex form is x minus h. So if we want to try to get x, x minus h equals x plus 5. Well, what we really need here then is x minus a negative 5, because then that turns into x plus 5. So our h is the negative 5, because we have to say x minus negative 5 gives us x plus 5. And again, that makes sense, right? Negative 5 plus 5 gives us 0 in here. That's going to be our x-coordinate of our vertex. Our y-coordinate of our vertex is k, which is 0. We can graph this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right here. Now we just use this a value as our slope. So a equals 3. And again, slope, rise over run. So 1, 2, 3. And then we go in the negative value. You know, we'll plot one more point. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, we're supposed to have three points for a line. So we'll do three points on each side. So you have that side. And there you go. That is your absolute value function. Okay, let's take a look at the rest of them. I'm going to go ahead and stop here and I'll make a new video with the other side if you'd like to watch it, but if you feel comfortable, have at it yourself.